Good day to all of you. So, today we shall take up um, the topic of unity power factor converter. Unity power factor. Let me first give you the background to this uh, topic and then we will go about seeing how we go about developing a DC DC converter which will address this problem. See most of the electronic equipments loads. So, I am going to use this as a load symbol to the loads. We normally use a rectifier and combine it with the capacitor filter circuit. Like this, this is followed by a capacitor. and maybe a bleeder resistance and goes to further loads. <coughs> this is the most popular AC to DC converter or plainly rectifier filter circuit that is um, used in most of the front ends of the electronic equipments. Here you have 230 volts 50 hertz, 230 volt RMS 50 hertz in, <coughs> in our country and a few other uh, countries you would have 115 volts 60 hertz. So, those standards are also there. So, this is basically coming from the mains. Now, if you take this particular uh, circuit which is interfacing on the one hand mains to the load on the other hand. It is interesting to see the current at this point. What is the current which is drawn from the mains? So, if we try to draw the current that is taken from the mains, let us say in a cycle. Let us say this is the mains voltage waveform sinusoidal one period. So, this is V mains. <coughs> so, for a 230 volt RMS, this will be around 325 volts, this is basically. 230 root 2. Now, the current of a capacitor filter rectifier circuit is basically this diode current which would flow through this during one half the cycle and it would go through this diode during the other half of the cycle. Now, if you analyze the shape of the waveform, it is 
something like this. Now, let us identify the peak and just before the peak, you will have a shoot coming down like that and likewise here. So, this would be the current waveform which you would see here at the means. So, now let us say because of this what are the issues. Now, if you take the grid the means which has two lines live and neutral and to that there are many loads collected. Let us say there is a load. Now, if this load were purely resistive, so purely resistive, then the nature of the current here would follow the voltage wave shape. So, if the voltage were sinusoid, then the current, this is V means, two thirty volts, the current would also have similar wave shape just like the voltage. This is the current I Now, this is a purely resistive load. Now, let us say we have put the rectifier capacitor type of load. And what is the type of current I that you would expect? So, the current I that we expect is something like this. Now, this is the current I that would actually flow out from the mains into the load. <coughs> now, because of this, there are many problems that you can envisage. First of all, the peak and RMS requirements. Now, you see that if it had been for a given power, for the same power fixed for the resistive and that for the capacitive filter load, the peak power requirement for the resistive load is much lesser than the peak power requirement for the capacitor input filter type of load for the same power. Because on averaging this, so, this area and this area is same. So, you will be delivering same similar power. Because the peak power is larger, the wall socket rating for a capacitor input type of circuit will be more for a given load than with the resistive load. Not only that, wall socket rating is higher, which means the mains should be 
capable of giving a much higher power even though the load power is smaller. The another important issue is there will be these track inductances impedances. So, when you draw a large spiky current there will be a drop which is some L sigma d i by d t across these track inductances. So, larger the d i by d t especially in these high rise time zones, you can have a large voltage across this L sigma and it will start corrupting the mains. So, at the point of common coupling, you will see there would be a dip and then flattening out. So, the um, uh, voltage waveform at the point of common coupling starts deteriorating. Waveform quality of the voltage. Now, because of all these points, we need to ensure that to the grid live and neutral, whatever may be connected, whatever may be the type of the load, this interfacing circuitry which you are having in between should be such that as far as the grid is concerned when some when the grid looks from this side it looks like a resistor such that the current waveform here is always sinusoidal in phase with the voltage waveform irrespective of the load. Now, how do we do that? This interface box should adjust its input impedance, should adjust its input impedance based on some control sensed from the load and the input signals. So, this can be a DC DC converter. Now, among the DC DC converters, if you take the boost converter, the boost converter has the inductor on the input side, which means the current is smooth on the input side. The buck converter has the inductor on the output side, which means the current is smooth on the output side, not on the input side, it is switching. So, boost converter has a, a tendency to smoothen out the input current. So, let us have a look at the boost converter and see whether it can be used as a variable resistor or a variable impedance. So, let us draw this boost converter. This boost converter has an inductor, let us say then a switch. a diode capacitance and R naught. This is V naught 
So DC. Now let us say this is Vn. We shall also now consider two points. One is the input current I in and the output current I naught, all are DC. <coughs> now, what is the relationship between the input and the output with the input, uh, with the control input being the uh, switch gate side and it is on and off for DTS period of time. So, we know that for the boost converter V naught equals V in by 1 minus D, where D is the duty cycle. Now, there is another relationship between I naught and I in. Let us say I in is equal to I naught by 1 minus D. This is by power conservation. We know that V naught I naught is equal to V in I in. Now, what is the input impedance R in as seen from the input side? So, it is nothing but V in divided by I in. So, R in is nothing but V in divided by I in. So, let us use these our relationships. V in V in is nothing but V naught into 1 minus D divide by I in is nothing but I naught by 1 minus D, which is equal to V naught by I naught into 1 minus D whole square or R naught into 1 minus D whole square. So, you see that R in is a function of D and the output load. So, as the load varies, if you modulate your uh, duty cycle, you can control the input impedance. So, by adjusting the duty cycle, we should be able to control the input impedance such that whatever be the load condition, the input can always see the desired input impedance, input resistance in this case. Or in other words, you control the impedance such that the input voltage wave shape as so this is V in control the impedance such that I in is of this wave shape. This is I in. such that V in by I in is equal to R in 
and this is controlled such that you get this kind of a wave shape. So, this is in fact the concept that we will be employing. So, we modify our rectifier filter in the following manner. The rectifier filter was in this form. Let us say this is a load, I will just put it as a stiff load, it could be any load for that matter. And we have the sine wave source coming from the grid. This is V mains or V i. Now, this is modified in the following way. We still retain the rectifier portion. Like this. So, up to this portion, we are going along with the previous circuit and then from here we start using a boost converter. So, this is a boost converter. So, this portion is now your replacement for this. So, this is a rectifier followed by a boost converter and this inductor will do the current smoothing. Now, let us study this circuit. What is the current wave shape here? This will be a wave shape which should follow, let us say the input voltage pattern. This would be the virtual V after rectification, V i after rectification, this is versus T and the current should ideally be like this at this point. Current I. However, because of the switching nature, the inductor current will not be just a nice smooth DC, it will actually have an upswing, downswing, upswing, downswing like this. And therefore, we can expect that we should have a kind of a waveform with switching ripples like this. Now, if we get this kind of a wave shape, that itself is a fantastic improvement as compared to a capacitor filter kind of current that we used to have
So, this was the current with capacitor filter only immediately after the rectifier through the diodes. So, the improvement would be significant just by using the boost converter and modulating the uh, switch uh, with pulse width modulator in order to get as a near sinusoidal uh, input current. So, let us look at the complete circuit and the block diagram. So, let us have our boost circuit here. We write that once more. This is our rectifier. Now, the boost this is the boost part of the circuit and then you have the load though I am indicating here with a resistive load. This is V naught, this is 230 volt RMS 50 hertz coming from the mains and we want to control the input current I. By controlling the gate pulses that you apply there. So, let us have a reference. Let us have a current reference. A comparator the output of the comparator goes through to a PI controller, output of the controller goes to a pulse width modulator. You have a triangular carrier output of that goes through a dry circuit which drives the power switch. <coughs> now, what do we give here? We need to feed back and we shall feed back the inductor current. You could sense the inductor current at this point. So, let me erase that point. Like that. Now, So, let us sense the inductor current and pass it here. This is I feedback and what is the nature of I reference? We would like I reference to be sinusoidal such that I feedback would also be sinusoidal whatever may be the load and sinusoidal meaning this should be in keeping with the wave shape of the voltage wave shape. So, let us see how do we get the reference. So, whatever be the reference I feedback will follow the reference so that the error here is 0. 
because the PI controller takes care of that. It will adjust the pulse width PWM here accordingly such that E error here is 0, then the feedback uh, I feedback portion will be same as the reference which means the current here would be the same as the reference. So, we should probably give a proper reference. So, let us see what what is it that we would want the reference to be. At this rectifier output, what is the voltage? The voltage is virtually a rectified full wave rectified waveform something like this. This is V let us say that we expect here. And what is the I that you expect? The I that you expect here is to have similar wave shape unity power factor. So, I should give a reference which is like this. Then I feedback will have a voltage wave shape like that and the waveform here would be a pure sinusoidal waveform before the rectification. There is also one other issue we we need to understand here what happens when the power increases or power changes. Now, let us say when the load changes power changes. Now, let us say the load decreases power decreases. If the power decreases the current here would decrease or in other words let us say the uh, input mains is unregulated. If this voltage increases the downstream converters will have closed loop and it will try to draw only the same power. So, it will be a constant power load most of the cases. So, for the same power if the input voltage increases the current should decrease. So, in some way the amplitude though the wave shape is supposed to be exactly like the voltage wave shape, the amplitude should be decided by the power drawn such that this current amplitude and the voltage amplitude together will be the power that is required by the load. So, how to bring in the dependency on the power? Let us look at the reference current requirement a bit more in detail. So, we know that V V in is equal to V m sin omega t of this form, the voltage of the mains or cos omega t. Now, V in by V m is sin omega t. Now, we get the wave shape by normalizing the input waveform. So, the input voltage normalized with the max uh, max value V m value would give you the wave shape. Now, we need the amplitude of I m for I m. Now, what is power P naught which is equal to V naught I naught and if you consider 100 percent efficiency P in will be P naught and P in is nothing but V R m s into I R m s 
if both V and I are sinusoidal. So therefore, I RMS is nothing but P naught by V RMS assuming efficiency as 100 percent. which is nothing but P naught by root 2 P naught V m by root 2. is root 2 P naught by V m. Now, what is I m? I m is equal to root 2 I r m s which is equal to root 2 into root 2 into P naught by V m or 2 P naught by V m. And what should be our I reference in an ideal case the AC waveform should be I m sin omega t. Now, let us replace this with this. So, you will have 2 P naught by V m representing the amplitude and for sin omega t, we will replace it with V i by V m coming from V i is equal to V m sin omega t. So, this would give a reference, this is measurable, this is also measurable and we know what the peak value is, this is the peak value, P naught can be measured from V naught and I naught, which is measurable. That is, you can measure P naught is equal to V naught I naught. You are anyway measuring V naught. You can put a current sensor, measure I naught and you obtain P naught. Therefore, if we if we take the original input wave shape, V i, V i which is a sinusoidal wave shape, pass it through a transformer, step down rectify it rectify what do we get here here we would get something like this now this divided by 
เวียงวิจุดการสปอนด์ตัวที่วอลต์เอชแอมพลิทูดนี้นี่คือเวียงซีนโอเมก้าทีอาฟุสเรกติฟายซึ่งนี่คือแอมพลิทูดนี้คือ Vm. Now, when you divide by that, you would get sine omega t, same wave shape as this, but normalized. So now you have sine omega t here. You measure v naught. Measure I naught. Multiply, you will get P naught. And this can be brought to one more box. And apply this function. This is nothing but sine omega t, which we have got, and this is something which we need to. So two p naught by v m into sine omega t. Which would be I R F. One intermediate block which you could fit in here. P naught. V in V m, so two into P naught by V m can be calculated there. Bring that and then put it here. This is nothing but a multiplication block. So this will give you two p naught by v m into sine omega t, or i m sine omega t. So now, if p naught increases, i m would increase. If p naught decreases, i m would decrease. Or if v m increases, i m would decrease. And the reference will accordingly change based on p naught and the wave shape of uh, the input voltage. So observe here two important things: the amplitude of I m changes with p naught, controlled by p naught, and the wave shape is controlled by the input voltage wave. Now this becomes I R F, which is actually the reference which you would give to the controller P I P W M. Boost feedback of I. 
This is I ref, which is something like that. So, in the end, in the end, we will have a circuit which is something like this. this is controlled by this and current I is measured, I L is measured and taken as feedback and the current here, the inductor current will appear in this fashion with the switching ripple. in keeping with the wave shape of I L reference. So, this way we will achieve uh, unity power factor action and improve the power quality of the grid. So, here I have shown only the current loop feedback there can be one more slower, this is the current fast acting current loop. You could have one more outer feedback loop, a very slow acting voltage loop V naught ref V naught ref V naught feedback. which will modulate this current and give it here. So, the amplitude of this current can also get modulated affected by this V naught feedback which you will take from here. So, this outer current loop is very slow, this should be slow, and this should be fast, only then you will get effective unity power factor action. <coughs> and most of the time you can do away with the outer um, uh, voltage control loop because most of the time the output is given to another load or a converter which will take from uh, this um, 325 to 400 volts DC and then develop the plus minus 12 volts, 5 volts for various other applications and they have very fast acting good regulation uh, regulated converters and therefore, uh, it can absorb the uh, unregulated voltage which occurs here. Therefore, most of the time you may not find it necessary to use the outer slow acting voltage control loop. But anyway, to bring narrow down the band of voltage uh, variation, one may use a slow acting outer voltage control loop. Okay. So, this is uh, unity power factor operation for you. Now, uh, that we have covered uh, the basic converter topologies, the uh, isolated converter topologies, non-isolated converter topologies uh, and also the various aspects of control starting from voltage control uh, to current control and how we build the controller. Uh, the uh, PI controller, and various other control structures 
and how we design it using the root locus method and to and also by the trial and error approach. So, now we shall um, try to look at some uh, examples of uh, uh, controllers uh, DC DC converters and see how we go about designing it. So, when we design a controller design of DC DC converter. There are many aspects to it. One is design rate the power circuit and components second aspect design the controller and thermal design designing appropriate heat sinks for the power semiconductor switches and you also have reliability design or designing for a given reliability. So, all these aspects should be put together to realize a proper performance measure. And then after that, there is also another uh, measure which is the cost. How do you realize a given performance for a particular specific cost? So, for now in this particular course, we shall try to uh, look at um, aspects of this. Designing the controller we have already seen. We shall probably look at briefly some aspect of this. Reliability design and cost design is out of the scope of this particular course and therefore, we shall not look at it, but in the back of your mind keep that these two are very, very important aspects that are essential for um, a full complete practical realization of the product. Now, when you come to uh, functional design, functional design of the power components. There are few aspects related to that. One is the power semiconductor switch. which is the MOSFET or the IGBT diodes. These are all power semiconductor switches. You need to appropriately choose them for the particular application. It is current ratings, it's voltage ratings, thermal ratings, all these have to be appropriately considered and then a proper device has to be chosen for that specific particular specification. How do we go about doing that? Because we shall do, we shall look into that aspect um, uh, in the next few classes. And uh, the second um, part is the capacitor, 
we need to size the rate the capacitor too. What would be the size of the capacitance? What should be the ESR of the capacitance? Should it be an electrolytic capacitance, tantalum capacitor or any other special types uh, and what are the issues involved? This is also another important issue that you need to uh, consider and look at the data sheets of these components. Third, very important is the inductor or I will gen generically call it as the magnetic components. In the non isolated case, you have only the inductor to handle deal with and in the isolated case, you have both the inductor and the transformer galvanic isolation. So, you have two components one is called the inductor and the other is the transformer. Now, both these components need to be designed and especially in the case of the inductor of the transformer, there are two aspects to it. So, the magnetic components on the one side you have electrical parameters like the value of the inductor, the currents through the inductor the voltage across the inductor or the magnetizing current through the transformer or the energy that the inductor has to store these aspects and on the magnetic and mechanical parameters you have the cross section of the core the window area of the core you have the permeability the saturation flux density the material of the core all these play an important role. We need to interface these two to realize uh, a proper magnetic component. So, how we go about doing all this, we shall dis discuss in the next class and next few classes to come. Thank you.